All right, guys. Well, it is a cold, dreary, wet January day here in Northeast Ohio. But it is above freezing. So I think today is the day, as much as I hate to do so, that we're going to get this thing out of the garage, get out the pressure washer, wash that carpet up. We do a little bit of washing on the frame on this as well. Because I've decided I'm not going to be painting the frame and the undercarriage of this, but I do want to spray it with wool wax when I'm all finished here. So I want to try and get as much of the dirt and grime off of it as I can beforehand. So much as I hate to get wet and dirty and be out in this weather, um, I'm layered up. I'm ready for it. So. I think we're going to get the pressure washer out here and take the next step, that is to get this thing cleaned up a little bit. So let's get to work. guys well I've done just this much and you can kind of see it's cleaning up okay that's just nasty There's a lot of dirt in there got a lot more to go but um, I'm gonna go over it once quick with the pressure washer and try to get as much dirt out of it as I can and then I've got some purple junk here that I'll spray onto it Especially kind of these oily places. There's one there, there's one here. I'm not sure what happened down here. It looks like somebody barfed. But um, we'll spray some of that onto some of those tough areas and we'll see kind of how that turns out. Um, try to get it as clean as we can. It'll look better and smell better too. So this is uh, one of the reasons that I prefer 
a rubber floor in a work truck. That's it. I'm going to get back to it. All right, guys. Well, I just uh, went inside and ate some lunch. And this thing's still dripping. And that water that's dripping out of it still looks a little dirty. So I think I'm going to go ahead and hit it again. I'll put some more of that uh, purple magic on it. And then uh, let it sit for a few minutes. Go over it one more time. I've got it out. I've got it soaked. <laughs> Might as well get it as clean as we can. And then uh, probably let it sit out here and drip for as long as I can. And then see if I can roll it up and take it inside. Um, spread it out down in the basement let it dry out for a few days before we get it reinstalled. So I think I'm going to go ahead and hit it again with some more of that purple magic. See if we can hose it off one last time. Get just uh, a little bit more of the dirt and stink and skeeviness out of it. It's definitely nasty. But we're getting there. All right, guys. Well, the adventure continues. I'm into the brakes on this thing. And I don't know. Anytime I get into drum brakes, I always kind of assume the worst or expect the worst anyway. Prepare for the worst. How's that? Let's prepare for the worst and hope for the best. But um, it's not a good sign when you pull the drum off and there's parts inside that fall out or come off with the drum. So yeah, clearly I'm going to need new brake shoes here. Um, this has been leaking for a while. You can see how it... Uh, Maybe you can see. I wrinkled the paint. Kind of wild, but um, brake fluid has that effect. It's rough on paint. So, um, I don't know. The springs and everything look to be in okay shape. Um, actually, look at that. I wonder if that plunger is even bad or if it uh, it's just come apart. It may have just blown the seals out because it over-traveled. That's funny. Uh, it's always something. Um, but I guess we're going to pull this apart and uh, we'll probably make sure that that adjuster wheel moves freely so that everything's going to work like it should once we get things put back together. We'll also make sure that our emergency brake cables are in good working order. Um, this being a five-speed truck, having a functioning emergency brake is important just because you need it if you want to leave the truck running and you're on any kind of an incline at all. You can't just throw it in park. So I'm going to go ahead and um, start tearing this down. I am going to need some hardware. If you can see that, that cable is snapped off. Um, it's part of the adjuster process or part of the mechanism that runs the auto adjust, which doesn't work all that well on these trucks anyway. Um, but at any rate, uh, we're into it here. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this apart. Uh, if you're not super familiar with Drum brakes, it can be a little daunting seeing all these springs and cables and clips and pins and everything going all which way. Um, if that's you, take the time and just take a couple of pictures. I don't work on drum brakes all the time. I've got a fair amount of experience with them. Actually, my first vehicle had four-wheel drum brakes. Um, so I, I do have some experience with them, but it's usually long enough between the times that I've worked on them and the designs differ enough that I usually just snap a couple of pictures anyway just so I can make sure I've got all the springs oriented correctly and everything is as it should be. So I'm going to go ahead and get it torn apart here. We'll see what we need to get coming. Um, probably going to end up having to pull the other side apart too just because I want to make sure that... Uh, 
everything is in good working order. And we'll go from there. So I'm going to get to work here. All right, guys. Well, got this other side apart. And it's not great either. So definitely needs brake shoes. Um, I'm a little concerned that this seems to be a little damp or a little oily. Um, sometimes that can be an indication that you've got obviously either a leaking wheel cylinder, which I had on the other side, or a leaky axle seal. And you're getting oil from the axle into the housing. Um, I don't see any oil visibly leaking, so uh, I may just go ahead and get another wheel cylinder for this side and um, make it new that way. Um, obviously, self-adjuster on this side is shot too. I'm not even sure if I'm going to put those self-adjusters back in here. There's some hardware missing. I may price out and see what it costs to get it, but my experience with these trucks has been that they don't ever really self-adjust like they should anyway. And it only takes a minute underneath there with a brake spoon to um, adjust them properly. You can reach in through this hole in the back. You can probably see there, through that hole. And you just turn this little adjusting wheel and tighten up your brakes. And having those properly adjusted makes a huge difference in how well these trucks brake. Uh, makes a big difference. So uh, I think we're going to be into this for wheel cylinders and a set of shoes. So we'll have to get those parts here before we can continue on with the project. All right, guys. Well, I figured it was a good investment of time to stop what I was doing, go inside, and get these parts ordered. Um, ended up ordering them online from Rock Auto. I use them for a lot of this kind of stuff if I can afford to wait. Um, they end up saving me quite a bit. Um, just case in point, uh, those wheel cylinders, um, I was able to get those through Rock Auto. Kind of got a mid-grade, didn't go for the most expensive, but didn't get the cheapest one. And I'm paying, uh, I believe, $6 a piece for them. Six bucks, that's right, six dollars. Um, those at my local parts stores, and this is not going Napa, which is generally more expensive, but generally also a little higher quality. Uh, getting those at O'Reilly or AutoZone, which is local to me here, they're about $18 a piece. So they're three times the cost. Uh, the brake shoes were comparable in price, but um, my experience is the local guys tend to really rake you over the coals when you need little odds and ends. Um, so the self-adjusters, the, uh, the spring pack, the hardware kit, I think they call it, um, that kind of stuff, they usually just rake you over the coals. So placed uh, an order with Rock Auto. Um, I'm getting uh, Bosch brake pads, uh, Wagner parts for a lot of the stuff. Um, and I think I've got $93 wrapped up in this brake job, and I'll be replacing everything that is uh, replaceable. Both wheel cylinders, pads, the hardware, the springs, the self-adjusters, everything. So um, it's not crazy expensive to do brakes uh, yourself. You can save some money by getting the stuff through Rock Auto. If you can afford to wait, it's going to cost me three or four days of waiting to get that stuff here. Um, I may just throw the wheels back on this thing and roll it out if I need to work on it or work on something else here in the shop. Um, or I may just do some things inside the shop to it that uh, need to be done. So um, if you can plan ahead a little bit, do so. You'll end up saving yourself some money if you can order the stuff online. Otherwise, uh, yeah, you can get it all local. Uh, these trucks are still pretty easy to find parts for. It's just the local guys seem to uh, 
cost a little bit more. You pay for the convenience of driving to town and bringing it home with you. So that'll probably be it for the brakes for now. Uh, we'll see what else we can get into here. All right, well, while I'm waiting on brake parts, I figured we may as well go ahead and refresh the fluid in this back end. Gives us a chance to get in here and make sure everything looks okay. Oil is thick, a little dark, and smelly. Those of you who know that smell, you know what I'm talking about. But the gears all look pretty good. Um, not a lot of excessive wear. They don't look too terribly bad. Of course, I've got it in gear here now, so I can't roll it over anymore. But um, ring and pinion both look pretty good. So a uh, future owner of this truck should be getting a good one. There's a little bit of spalling on one of the side gears right in here. Um, that's not terribly unusual on those side gears. Um, those are not taking quite the force, the torque that um, the ring and pinion do. So it's not a huge concern, and as I said, it's not terribly unusual. Uh, so we'll go ahead and let this thing drain for a while. seal this cover, top it off with fresh fluid, have one more thing off the list here. So now one little revision to my earlier message. Um, I ended up spending just a little more than a hundred dollars on my brakes here. I neglected on that first order order the emergency brake cables and I'm just gonna go ahead and replace those while we're in here these ones don't seem to move too freely so it's not worth messing with I'll just put new cables on so I ended up with a little bit more than a hundred dollars in it um, not a whole lot more probably would have been right around a hundred bucks if I hadn't had to pay for a little bit of additional shipping but um, it's one of the downfalls of Rock Auto uh, aside from the fact that their shipping is kind of messed up. They ship from a bunch of different warehouses and things come in different packages and you end up paying more for shipping. Um, but once you've placed an order, you can't add items to your order. If you want uh, to add some things and combine an order, the only mechanism they give you for doing that is to cancel the original and then reorder everything. And... Um, Rather than mess with all that and invariably something go wrong and taking longer to get what I need, I just went ahead and paid a little bit extra for shipping on a separate order. So I think we've got everything coming here now to get these brakes cleaned up. Um, went ahead and did a little bit of work. Got the dome lights working. So those are working now, got the windshield wipers working, fiddled with the switch on that a little bit and that motor started working. So marking a few things off the list here, making a little progress, one little thing at a time and um, here real soon we'll have this thing ready to go for a ride. All right guys, well I'm still waiting on brake parts here so I'm pecking away at little things again this will be a welcomed fix replace the hinge pins in that door and this back door so everything works like it should and latches up tight again yeah so I can get out now. Looks like I need to do some work on this door. Maybe I need to make an order with um, 
CP Addict. Get this plate that goes in here. I've already cut the section out of another door and welded it in over top of these. You can pop rivet it in too. Um, I've done that in the past, but I also need to get, they have a little fix that goes inside the switch panel in here. This one's got neither of the mounting holes that hold that bezel in place, so probably need to do those. Anyway, um, so maybe I'll just order their little door fix as well. This door needs all kinds of help. Um, it's got, you see that? That's broken. That's supposed to be a reinforcement that keeps this thing from being quite so floppy. And that's probably why this is also cracked here. You can see that, but flexes quite a bit there without that little reinforcement tab in there. It helps a little bit to have that tab in place, so I don't know if I'll mess around with all that right now or not. Um, again, it's a work truck. I want it to work right, but it doesn't need to be pretty. So, hey, a little tip on uh, these door bushings little piece of half inch pex works perfect for that cut it off to be about the right length and then slice it lengthwise so you can snap it over the pin works like a champ so anyway one or two more little things off the list here maybe someday I'll actually put a mirror on this side but then I'd just have to walk around it to get in and out of the garage here. So I suppose the truck ought to be uh, easily movable before then. And that's not the case right now. So it'll just have to wait a little longer anyway. That's what I'm up to at this point. All right, guys. Well, I got the brakes taken care of. New pads, shoes rather, new wheel cylinders, new hardware, new emergency brake cables, new self-adjusting kit, and I've done that on both sides of this truck. So I think the drums were fine, they seem to be in pretty good shape. I'm going to go ahead and throw them back on there. Um, just a note on these, if you're ever doing brakes on this type of truck and you've not done it before, uh, it might be worth the time to pull the drums off and take a measurement. There's two different measurements. The width of the pads is different. Uh, these are three and a half inch pads. Some of the trucks have three inch pads. And I don't know for sure, but I suspect that might be a difference between single rear wheel and dual rear wheel but i'm not entirely positive on that but uh that's just something to watch out for there are two different widths of pads um, but this one is ready to go back together we're getting some white stuff here kids actually had a snow day today so they've there's been lots of four-wheeler riding and sledding and Good old-fashioned clean fun in the snow today but um, finally had a minute to put this thing back together so I'm gonna go ahead and throw those drums back on um, probably go ahead and snug the wheels up and then I'll adjust those and um, maybe I'll shoot a little bit of video on how I adjust these uh, rear drum brakes All right, well, we've got the rear tires bolted back up. Everything's torqued down and tight. And I thought I'd take a minute and just give you a brief overview of how I like to adjust these rear brakes. Um, first of all, a couple of things. Uh, there are holes 
through the backing plates of the drums that you can get to to adjust them. Sometimes they're plugged with a little cap like that. You just pop that guy out with a screwdriver or a pair of pliers or something. And um, it'll give you access to get in there and adjust them. You can do this with a slotted screwdriver or one of these. This is uh, it's called a brake spoon. Um, it's kind of specially designed for adjusting drum brakes. They come in a variety of different shapes and sizes. That one's got a little bit flatter curve on it. Um, this one's kind of half mooned. I think somebody probably did that themselves. This one's real flat and kind of blunted on the tip. So um, uh, these are a good thing to come across at uh, yard sales and auctions and things like that. Um, as the prevalence of drum brakes has kind of declined, um, those tools have become a lot more affordable. And a lot of, in a lot of cases, people don't even know what they are. It's kind of a funky looking little pry bar thing, right? Um, anyway, uh, the truck is in neutral. It's jacked up here. It's on jack stands. Um, the key is to get the wheels off of the ground so that they spin freely. Um, and what I like to do, I'll go ahead and slide under here. You know, it's kind of juicing fluid everywhere here because I was bleeding the brakes earlier. Um, there's a little star wheel kind of right up inside here. You see that? That's what you're going to get on with the tip of this tool. Um, and on this one, this side's going to have to go down, right? Yes, it needs to go down. I had to think about that for a second. It's going to be a little bit difficult to do here with... jack stand in the way, but you can kind of hear it ratcheting in there. That's ratcheting past the self-adjuster. So you go a little bit, and then you roll the tire. And as long as the tire rolls freely, you can continue to adjust that out. Now when you start to get a little bit of resistance in the drum, stop. You'll probably hear it before you really feel it. See we're still nice and free there. So what this thing is doing is, there's a screw inside there that as I ratchet this, it lengthens at the bottom and pushes the bottom of the shoes apart and into the drum. Still real free, no contact there at all. So I'll go ahead and I'll continue ratcheting that star wheel and lengthening that screw until I start to get a little bit of resistance on the drum. And if you stop periodically and just spin the tire, you'll start to hear it scratch a little bit. That means you're getting close. You'll start to hear it make contact. And then once you get just a little bit of resistance in there, um, you should still be able to move it by hand, but you want to have some drag there. That means that those shoes are starting to make contact with the rear drum. And I'm telling you, if these are adjusted properly, the brake feel on these trucks is entirely different. There's no, or almost no, free travel in the pedal at all. As soon as you touch that pedal, it starts to brake. So if you've got a truck that um, you've got a lot of free travel in the pedal, adjust your rear brakes. My guess is, especially if you've got a parking brake that doesn't really hold, or um, 
I don't know, in some cases, I guess you might not know if a parking brake works and cables might be froze up and things like that. But um, uh, keep those rear brakes adjusted. It makes a huge difference in uh, the braking ability of these trucks. So I'll go ahead and stop the video here. I'm going to go ahead and um, adjust both these sides up. I'll put my little dust plugs in there when I'm finished. That might not keep the spiders out, but at least keep the mice out. And uh, we'll be ready to set this thing back down on the ground and get it off the jack stands one more time. Well, I'm in the shop again. Still fiddling with this truck. Um, got uh, brakes all adjusted up. Got our rear wheels back on. Got it down on the ground. And uh, just driving it around the driveway here a little bit. Um, brakes were just not right. Uh, it was like I had no vacuum assist at all. It was like the booster was bad or something. So, um, kind of went through the process of troubleshooting these things. And one of the things I like to do is, this is the, uh, pump off my little Mighty Vac kit. Um, but it's got a vacuum gauge on it. And you can just stick that little hose right down into the end of the hose from the vacuum pump and just get a reading on how much vacuum your pump is generating. Uh, and I didn't have enough. I had like six, seven pounds of vacuum. I think uh, spec is something more like 19 or 20. I went out and uh, put the vacuum gauge on uh, the black truck, toothless, and fired it up and I had like 23 pounds of vacuum. So clearly uh, this vacuum pump was no good. As you can see, I've got a pair of them there. Uh, this was one that I had down on a skid in the shop or in the shed down there and um, swapped it in first. And of course it had next to nothing, even though it feels like it's moving air and feels like everything's working right. It uh, just wasn't creating vacuum. So third time was the charm. It was the last one that I had was actually on a um, parts engine that was down there. But I pulled it off, threw it on there, and lo and behold, we've got good working brakes. So um, in the midst of troubleshooting that, I went ahead and repaired a vacuum line for the blend door actuator. And I thought maybe that was leaking and contributing some to the issue, and it probably was, but certainly not enough to make that big a difference. And even after I repaired it, um, Still didn't have brakes or good vacuum. So, um, got that taken care of. Uh, guys, we are getting down to kind of the skinny end of this list. Um, diffs are all filled up. I've got kind of piddly onesie twosie interior stuff and mirrors. I gotta get a mirror on this side yet, and I've gotta replace, um, replace one of the bolts on the one on the other side. Uh, one of them is rotted off. I think it's the one there on the back, the bottom of the tripod. So I've got to get that done. And then uh, I think we're ready to take this thing out for a bit of a test drive. Um, I've got the carpet inside the house. Uh, it's been in there drying for about a week now. So it should be getting pretty close to dry. I'll go ahead and get these seats pulled out again kind of clean this up as best we can, vacuum it out, vacuum as much of that dirt and mud out as we can before we put the carpet back down. And then uh, we'll have to cut holes in the carpet for 4x4 four four shifter and, of course, the 5-speed shifter. Um, you can put the rest of the dash together. Uh, obviously, I've got the door panel off here. Um, i got to do a little something here. This is not quite right. So um, kind of down to little things. But uh, we're getting real close to taking taking this thing out the driveway for a ride. Um, real, real close. I can even do that before I uh, flush the coolant. And I'd kind of like to do that. I'd kind of like to get it out and up to temperature so that uh, we can get everything flushed out good when we drain it. So that's kind of what I'm working on here this evening. The sun's gone down here and uh, kind of the end of another cool snowy day in northeast Ohio. I do enjoy this time of year. Um, 
It's a nice day today. The sun was shining and uh, I enjoy the snow. So that's kind of where we're at for now. We'll uh, see what else we can get done here in the next day or two. If you enjoy this project, uh, I'll put a link here in the corner to uh, the rest of the project uh, for Frankenstroke here. And uh, if you would give us a, a like and subscribe to the channel, we'd appreciate it greatly. Thanks for watching.